Chris Sims, Pro Football Live co-host with Mike Florio, Bleacher Report, NFL analyst, and the former NFL quarterback. Hi, Chris. Hey, what's up, Dan? How you doing, man? Uh, I'm ready to – you always have opinions, but I'm curious what you think of this ESPN list where they uh, were ranking – these uh, quarterbacks, but you had comments from scouts and you know, defensive coordinators, coaches on this. Some pretty, pretty uh, brutal, some honest uh, comments here about these quarterbacks. Did any of them stand out to you? Well, I, I can't say, you know, I'm going to sit here and dissect every comment that I see on here. Uh, I think the thing that I look at more than anything, you know, first of all, it's just where I'd argue some of the, the points here, okay? Like, let's just start there. I look at, like, Tier 1. Tier 1, Rodgers, Brady, no-brainer, right? Like, that's, yeah. no, there's no doubt about it. But where I would push back is, like, 3, 4, and 5. Now, I know where Tier 2 is 5 with Matt Ryan. But where I see Drew Brees at 3, Ben Roethlisberger at 4, Matt Ryan at 5, I would substitute those three, four, five with Russell Wilson, Matthew Stafford, and Carson Wentz to me. Uh, at this point okay. in the career for a Drew Brees or a Ben Roethlisberger, I don't think they're the level of player that a Russell Wilson or a Stafford is. And, of course, Carson Wentz was the MVP of football last year, in my eyes, if he doesn't get hurt, you yep. know, there in week 5, 14. All right, so Brady and Rodgers heads above everybody else, even Brady at his age, which is pretty remarkable. Yeah, I, I mean, Brady, Brady certainly is a Tier 1 quarterback. Now, I do think there's a significant gap between Aaron Rodgers and everybody else. Uh, and you know I have a love affair with Aaron Rodgers, whatever it may be. But I also think you know that I try to evaluate these things and try to be as un non-biased as possible or unbiased as possible. Aaron Rodgers deserves to be in, like, Tier 0 right now. I mean, we're talking about the greatest gunslinger we've ever seen in the sport, yet he protects the ball better than anybody we've ever seen in the sport. Very horrible offense, like I've always told you about. Aaron Aaron Rodgers, the Green Bay Packers, it is all about him and his ability to make magic happen is the only way they can win football games. So that's where I separate them. And then the other one that I, I, I don't understand the – you know, I don't want to say disrespect, but Matthew Stafford at number seven to me is a little disrespectful at this point of his career. You know, I get sick of hearing the whole, you know, oh, he didn't win, he hasn't won playoff games. Okay, I mean, tell me some players he's had on his team worth a damn other than Calvin Johnson through his career. I mean, Tom Brady in New England isn't doing it all by himself. He's had a lot of Hall of Famers on both sides of the ball to help him and, a, and the greatest coach in the history of all time. So you need some help. Matt Stafford is a guy I look at that go, one of the most physically gifted, best gifted quarterbacks ever to play the game, one of the greatest arms to ever play the game. He is the only reason the Detroit Lions are relevant in this situation. Offensive line play, as you know, has been horrible. I don't think they've had a 100-yard rusher in a football game since 2013, and don't think they've had a 1,000-yard rusher since he's been there. So, you know, uh, we all look at Matthew Stafford and go, oh, they, you know, doesn't win a playoff game, or they just missed out on the playoffs. And I want to go, well, those Detroit Lion teams are like 4-12 and 12 football teams without Matthew Stafford. He makes them relevant and puts them in the conversation for the playoffs and being a playoff caliber team. Yeah, I think Roethlisberger's too high. Uh, I could see where where the Saints have become a running team, a run first, right. pass second. So I would I would drop Breeze down. Russell Wilson deserves to be higher up. I don't think anybody was more valuable to their team than he was last yeah. year. And, uh, Agreed. Uh, so I, I would put him in that category as well. Uh, McLovin, run down the rest of the list there. So we got – it's Brady, then Rodgers. Yeah, Brady, Rodgers, uh, Breeze, Roethlisberger – Number five is tier two, Matt Ryan. Okay. Then uh, then you get Russell Wilson. Then you have aforementioned Matthew Matt Stafford. Stafford. And I just want to add that a lot of people think Stafford's too high on this list. Okay. He's going the opposite direction. Philip Rivers at eight. Oh, yeah. Yep. Uh, then you get Carson Wentz at nine. Number 10 is Andrew Luck with a lot of asterisks about his health. 11, Cam Newton. Number 12 is Derek Carr, which they said was that's a too high. One. I think that's, that's too high for him. 13, Jimmy G. 14, That's too high for him, too. Deshaun Watson, 15, Kirk Cousins, uh, tied with Alex Smith at 15. Uh, 17 is Eli Manning, tied with Dak Prescott. All uh, right, that's good. Yeah. All right. Then Jared Goff, 19, so, just to so round it out. Kirk, yeah. D, Kirk D. Cousins has done more than some of these other quarterbacks have done. Yeah, I, I, I hear you that. I mean, there's, there's, there's a few things there to look at. I mean... You know, hey, as good as I think Phillip Rivers is, I don't know if I would put him in front of Carson Wentz or Cam Newton at this point of his career. Another thing in just the Tier 2 that jumps out to me, I mean, a healthy Deshaun Watson, 
to me, he's in the conversation around five, six, or seven in that tier two, not number 14 when wow. healthy. I mean, okay. uh, I do, I do, I would put him up in that category. And, you know, and then even diving into tier three, like, I'm not, you know, people are always going to think I'm a hater because my dad was Phil Sims and I played for the Giants. Listen, Eli Manning is the greatest Giant quarterback of all time. I understand that. Um, but no, I do not think he's the 17th best quarterback in football right now, nor do I think he's even close to that. So I think that's a really bad misrepresentation. I would say he's the biggest question on the Giants roster at this point. And then, you know, I look at that. Um, I look at also, you know, of course, Blake Bortles at 26. I think he could have been a tier four quarterback, really, in my eyes. But for the most part, I, I don't look at it as being too wrong. I do think people look at stats too much when they do things like this. Even NFL executives, just because they have a fancy business card doesn't mean they know it all. Um, and, you know, like with a guy like Drew Brees, Dan, at number three, Drew, I mean, Drew Brees, we know he's an all-time great. He's a legend. He's awesome. He's a first ballot Hall of Famer. But I would also say, you know, in that offense, uh, there's a lot of quarterbacks that would put up those kind of numbers on a yearly basis. I'm not trying to take anything away from him. I'm just saying at this point of his career, I don't think he is on the same playing field as some of the other quarterbacks we've seen in the top ten. Just with physical ability, you know, they say being able to carry your team by yourself. Uh, I don't think Drew Brees is capable of doing that anymore. And, and I think last year kind of showed that to a degree. They changed their team to a running football team because I don't think they wanted to rely on that from Drew Brees. Better father, Eli Manning's father or your father? <laughs> uh, I, I can't speak to Archie's fatherhood. He seems uh, like or, a really good dad. He does. I agree. He seems still a pretty good dad, too, though. It's hard for me to, to argue that, that point. Either way, I think they're two guys that um, – you know, get a little bit underappreciated for what they did on the football field back in their day, too. Yeah. And uh, that, that's where I always look at Archie, and I know my dad always says that about Archie. As Archie was one of the most talented quarterbacks he ever saw and just never had a chance because he never had a team around him. Yeah, would you rather have golf or Garoppolo? Uh, I would rather have Garoppolo at this point. I would. Jared Goff, I still have questions about. Jared Goff would be another guy. You know, I think he's right around that 19 or 20 range. But I know, again, we're, we're in the fantasy era where everything's about stats and quarterback rating, and that's all that people look at. I think that at least half the league would have thrown 28, interception, 28 touchdowns and seven interceptions playing quarterback for that Rams team with Sean McVay's offense. So I don't always look at stats and go, oh, yeah, that's a great year. No, it's the context of that stats. I'm not going to give Jared Goff a whole lot of credit when he throws a ball behind the line of scrimmage to Todd Gurley and he runs for an 80-yard touchdown and go, oh, what a play by Jared Goff. That was unbelievable. Oh, it's third and 51 and it's a screen to the house by Robert Woods. What a play by Jared Goff. They don't that's say where... what a play by Jared Goff. They well, might. I know, but that's where it gets lost in context because after the game, people go, look, Jared Goff played pretty awesome. And I'm not saying he didn't play it. Awesome. I'm saying he played good. Yeah, but he played a full season, though, Chris. Garoppolo has played seven games. I I get that. I just think, I, you know, again, I'm just going off of, I think, pure talent and, of course, what I think that potential can be. Goff is going in the right direction. Uh, I just, I've always thought Garoppolo was a little more talented than a Jared Goff. I wasn't incredibly high on Jared Goff coming out in the draft. And I think you're going to see an explosion like we saw with Jared Goff from Jimmy Garoppolo this year. In that Kyle Shanahan offense, that system fits his skill set so well, people are going to rank Jimmy Garoppolo higher than he should be at the end of this year, too, because his stats are going to be like 30 touchdown passes and eight interceptions. And everyone will go, well, is he one of the five best quarterbacks in football? And I don't care if he throws for 40 touchdowns touchdowns and five interceptions he's not one of the five best no matter what happens at the end of the year but he is going to inject him himself into that conversation because people are going to look at stats and people don't always pay attention to context at this time jared goff or deshaun watson oh uh, i go deshaun watson <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah you're tough I know. well i am tough, you're it, tough. But deshaun watson has a chance to be like if you we if we went two to three years down the road, I wouldn't be shocked if you and me are on the on the radio having a conversation about Deshaun Watson being the best quarterback in football. I think he has that type of potential, and I think what he did with his little four and five game run last year, man, that was some Aaron Rodgers ish type stuff I saw out there with him making magic happen with his legs, his arms, his leadership, you know, all of that to where I thought, ooh, that is very, very special. And uh, I think he's only scratching the surface of what he can be. All right, I'll leave you with this. Todd Gurley got paid. 
Is yeah. he the anomaly or are running backs now going to get, are they going to move up now in the pay scale here? I do think they're going to move up in the pay scale. I do. Um, I, I think with the two running back committees that were in the running back by committee we're seeing throughout the NFL, we're going to start seeing some of these top tier running backs, you know, be able to play a little bit longer because they're not going to be ground, grinded into the ground like they were in the 80s and the 90s and the early 2000s where they had such a short shelf life in the NFL. Uh, Gurley's the best running back in the sport to me. So this, the, where I find it interesting is where it becomes for Le'Veon Bell now. This is really going to dictate what he can ask for for as well. I mean, you look at Gurley, Gurley, 0.7 yards per more per rush than a Le'Veon Bell, over five yards more per catch than Le'Veon Bell. Uh, he's equally as important, plays the same type of role, except I would argue he's more explosive than Le'Veon Bell, can take the ball to the house from 70 yards out where a Le'Veon Bell can't. Uh, so I do think it's going to be interesting. And I think we're seeing some serious super freaks at the position right now, maybe more than we've ever seen. Thank you, Chris. I hope I was good. I appreciate you having me, man. You're the man. Uh, stop by when you, uh, you know, you need to. Uh, when I re-up for yeah. Sativa Sims? <laughs> yeah, when you... <laughs> <laughs> yes, I got a laugh out of you, too. That's good. Oh, uh, you're funny. Thank you, Chris. I'll see you, man. That's you. Uh, Chris Sims. For more Dan Patrick Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV or download the Dan Patrick Show app.